Okay, so today we're going to be starting our three-part series on how to do cross-tab communication with JavaScript. It's going to be a three-part series. We're going to cover a different approach in each lesson. Today we're going to be focusing on local storage. Now we're starting with local storage because it is currently the most browser-compatible method to go about this, despite it technically being a workaround. So if you would like to follow along, I have a repository up on GitHub called cross-tab communication. You can go ahead and pull that down on the branch 00 start here. This will be the starting base code that we're going to be starting with for each different lesson. And then once you have that pulled down, go ahead and install the single dependency that we have called serve, just so we can get a static server up and running and then run npm run serve so that you have the server running on your local. And then go ahead and get two different browser tabs open with that application and point them both to the local storage page. Once you have that done, let's dive into the code, go into pages, local storage, index.html, and this is where we're going to be doing our coding today. Okay, so now before we dive into actually starting, let's go ahead and demonstrate how cross-tab communication using local storage works. So let's jump into our application here with our two different tabs open, and let's open up the console, and then in one of the tabs, let's actually add an event listener on the global storage event. So window, add event listener, this one's just called storage. And we can take a function that accepts an event, and we can just console.log out that event so that we know it got hit, and we can also peek at what the event has. Okay, so with that set, anytime that we set or delete an item from our local storage, this event listener for storage is going to fire off our callback function and console.log out that event. So let's go into our other tab here and set something on our local storage. So local storage dot set item testing. This is a test. And let's go ahead and set that. And then let's jump back over into the other tab. And you can see we have an event here for our storage event. We can peek in and see exactly what that was. So the key is testing, which is the first argument that we passed in. And the new value is the second argument that we passed in. So old value is whatever the old value is for this key within local store. And those are the three different properties within our storage event that we're actually going to be working with today. So now the main caveat here is that this listener will not be called on the tab where the change has occurred. So since I have this listener set up on this tab, if I were to make a change within our local storage from this tab, this event will never fire. So I can demonstrate that really quick. So local storage dot set item test from single tab testing. And you can see the event never fires. However, it fires off just fine if we were to change from this tab. You see there. And that's really the basis for how to do cross tab communication using local storage. Add an event listener to both tabs, which cover the use case where the storage event will not fire for the tab that is emitting the storage event, and then handle whatever you need to handle for both instances, whether the storage event captured it or it did not capture it. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into our code base here and get started with some of our logic. To give you a quick overview of the page structure within our body, we have our brief little navigation, our H1, and then we have a form to actually send a message across different tabs. And then we have a form to clear out any messages that we have, as well as a list so that we can list messages. And then we also have this message placeholder here as well. And then within our script, I have a couple of global variables defined already for us just to get us up and running, as well as a couple of utility methods to get us up and running. These are all going to be shared across the three different lessons that we're going to be covering. So to start out with, messages L is the messages ordered list that we have. So this is going to be the element parent for each of our different messages. The messages placeholder L is the placeholder paragraph copy that we have here. Messages key is the key within local storage that we're going to be saving our messages under. And then we have a couple of sender ID constants here. These are going to be used so that we can identify which tab is sending which messages. So if I send a message from this tab, I want to be able to know this message was sent from this tab. If I send it from this tab, same thing. So that's what those are going to be used for. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and attach our event listeners for our form submission. So let's dive into our functionality code here. Document forms. We got a form called send message form. And we're going to add event listener submit. And we'll pass in a callback function that we'll define here in a second called handle send message. Next, we have another form called clear messages form. This clears out all of our messages and we're going to add an event listener for submit on that as well. And we'll call this function handle clear messages. And then let's go ahead and define both of those really quick before we forget. So function handle send message, take the event and then we'll just prevent default on that event for right now. Go ahead and copy and paste handle send message. 
change the name to handle clear messages. And then in addition to being called by our submit event listener, we also want to be able to call this ourselves. So let's just put the event prevent default within an if statement if we have an event then call. Okay, so now next up, let's go ahead and define our storage event listener and the handler for that. So window add event listener storage handle new message is what we'll call that function. Let's go ahead and define it really quick. So function handle new message. And then within here, we're going to spread out the event. We're going to just grab those three keys that we truly care about. So one's called key, one's called new value, and the other one's called old value. Okay, and then we're going to have a couple more functions here just to keep things clean. So let's define function get messages, which is going to get the messages from our local storage for us. Const messages equals get parsed storage item, which is one of the utilities that we have predefined. We're going to pass in the messages key for that. And then we're going to return back if not array is array on messages. Then we're just going to return back an empty array. Otherwise, let's return back messages. Next up, we're going to have a function to get our messages as well as add a new message to those messages. So we're going to call this add message. It's going to take in a message for us. Let's define this as const messages equals get messages and then just push our new message to those messages and return back our messages and then we're gonna have another function to create our message schema so let's call this make messages and take in the message string and let's just return back the function of our message schema so we're gonna have an ID of get unique ID and this is one of those utility functions to find down below we're going to have our sender ID as tab sender ID. This is one of the globals that we have defined, which is calling a utility function that we have below to grab our tab instances specific key for where this script has been run. So this will be unique per tab instance that we have open and that should be sender ID, not send ID. And then we'll just tag our message onto that as well. Okay. Two more functions to make here. We're going to have function make messages L. This is going to be the individual message element that we're going to append into our messages ordered list. So this is going to accept in our result of our make message. So we're just going to spread this out and grab each key individually. So message ID and sender ID. Let's define our li as const li equals document.create element li. We're going to have a base class name that will define no matter what as px3, py1, and rounded. We'll attach our ID as the ID for this. Our text content is going to be our message. And then we're going to have a dynamic class name depending on whether this tab that we're currently on is the tab that sent the message or it's the tab that received a message. So if sender ID equals tab sender ID, then we're going to first and foremost just define our base class name. Then we're going to have the BG be blue, our text white, and we're going to align this to the right side of the DOM. Otherwise, we'll again extend out the base class name. We'll have the BG be gray. Our text will be white still. And we'll align this to the left side of our DOM. So if we're on the tab that sent the message, the message will be to the right and it will be blue. If we're on a tab that received the message, the message is going to be on the left side and it's going to be gray. Finally here, let's just return out our LI. And then lastly here, we have a function called display messages. And this is just going to be responsible for plopping our message on the DOM. So messages for each message. On our OL parent, we will append child and we're going to make a message element out of our message and append that in. Okay, sweet. So now let's scroll back up here to handle send message and let's start finishing these handle functions out. So for handle send message, we're going to want to grab the value off of the event. So const value equals event target message value. So we're going off of the target, which is the form going into the field with the name of message and grabbing the value off of that. Let's go ahead and make our message so that we get a unique ID for it as well as append in our sender ID. So 
make message and then we'll pass in our value for that. And then let's concatenate that as well as grab the remainder of our messages with add message. And then let's go ahead and store this on our session storage. So set stringified storage item, pass in our messages key, and then all of our messages. And then finally some cleanup for our form. So event target will reset the form and event target message will reset the focus on the field. We'll skip over handle clear messages for right now, just so that we can get to where we're testing. And we'll move into our handle new message function so that we can actually accept messages from other tabs. Uh, and before we actually dive into that, let's change our old value. Let's set a default value of this to our messages. So let's just pass it and get messages on that. And then let's clean up our new and old values. So new value equals, we're gonna call a utility function that we have down below called parse array. And we're gonna pass in our new value for that. And we're gonna do the same for our old value. And this is just gonna make sure that the value for this is actually an array and not a stringified array. And so now with this, what we need to do now is define which of the values with a new value are actually new and were not part of our old value. So to do this, I have a utility function down below called get array difference. So we're just gonna call that and define the result as new messages. Get array difference, we'll pass in the new value the old value and we'll do that based off of the ID key. And then with those new messages, we're just gonna to want to display messages. So new messages gets passed into display message there. And then we'll call another utility function called hide L to hide our placeholder element since we have some messages. Okay, now real quick before we give this a test, let's uh, fix a couple of issues that I see real quick. So I put a couple of S's where they shouldn't have been. So new messages, this should also be new messages here on the, our display messages. Make messages should just be make message. And then make messages L should just be make message L. All right, let's give that a save, jump back into our browser, refresh both tab instances, and let's give this a test. Test message, send that off. Looks okay on this tab instance so far. Let's check the other one. And we have our test message showing up here within our receive section. So seems like receiving messages is working. Now we're ready to go ahead and rig up our sending message so that the message also shows up on this tab as well. So let's jump back into our code, scroll back up to our handle send message function. And then right before we set our stringified storage item, let's call handle new message. And this accepts a storage item event, but really all we're grabbing is the key, new value, and old value out of this. So what we can do is define a function to pass in here with just key as our messages key and a new value as all of our messages. And then we have our default value of get messages for our old value, so we can really leave that. All right, and that should be all that we need to do so that our send messages show up on the browser tab where we sent them. So let's go ahead and give that a test. Let's refresh both of our tab instances. And you'll also notice that our messages are not propagating on load. So we will take care of that next. And let's test this out. So test from tab two, send that. And you can see now it's showing up on this tab as well. And if we check the other one, there it is too. So that seems to be working okay. Let's go ahead and take care of the use case where these are not propagating on load. So just before our display messages function, let's add in another function called load messages. Let's grab our messages using our get messages function. If we have messages length, we're going to hide our placeholder L. And then we'll just call display messages with our messages. And then lastly, we need to call load messages on load. So just scroll up here to the top and add our load messages call. Let's go ahead and save that, jump back into the browser, refresh this and our old message here should show up. And you can see that it actually kept that it was sent from this tab. And we can do the same for the other tab here. And you can see that it kept that it was received on this tab. Okay, sweet. So that all seems to be working good. Next up, let's take care of our clear messages so that we can actually clear them out. Let's jump back into our code base. Let's jump down to our handle clear messages function, which we just kind of skipped over for right now. And let's set stringified storage item for our messages key to an empty array just to clear it out. And then for our ordered list messages L, let's just set the inner HTML to an empty string to clear that out. And then we'll show our messages placeholder element. Now, since within our handle new message, we're doing a get array diff on our new and old value 
Technically, this is, if we send in an empty array for a new value, it's going to say, hey, there is no difference here, um, and it's just not gonna change anything. So what we need to do is within our handle new message function, add an if we don't have a new value or we don't have length to our new value, let's just return handle clear messages. And that will take care of clearing the messages whenever we receive an empty array or a null value for our new value. Let's go ahead and give that a save and let's give it a test. Just jump back into our browser, refresh both tab instances and clearing messages on one tab should clear them on both. So let's give it a test. All right, worked for that one and it worked for this one as well. All right, awesome. Seems like everything here is working. Uh, we got our messages rigged up. We're able to receive them from a tab and show them on the tab that sent them. We're able to discern which tab we sent them from and we're able to clear them out. Okay, great. So in the next message, we'll go over how to do the same process, except we'll be using a shared worker, which is similar to using a web worker, which means that all of the heavy lifting, all of the logic that we have within our worker is going to take place on a separate thread from our main application. So this is going to be great if you need to do heavy lifting with your cross tab communication logic.